welcome to the recording for Trinity Lutheran Church in Iuka and Faith Lutheran Church in Flora as we celebrate the great feast and festival of Pentecost, uh, which I will explain what that means in my sermon in just a little while. Uh, and so I welcome you as you watch this video. May it be of good to you and supplement your worship at home. Uh, and we will continue these recordings through the end of the month of June at which point then hopefully everyone will be able to uh, come back and worship here in person. Um, in the meantime, uh, we will continue to do this. Um, so anyway, God's blessings to you during this time. All right, it is continuing to be Divine Service Setting 3 without communion. And we begin with our opening hymn, hymn 496, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. Forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, 
He gives power to become the children of God, and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Amen. We now continue with the intro it as it is printed on the insert or on your screen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world, alleluia. The righteous shall be glad. They shall exalt before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Alleluia. God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, exalt before him. The Lord gives the word, behold, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Awesome so is God from his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He is the one who gives power and strength to his people. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world, alleluia. The righteous shall be glad. They, they shall, shall exalt before God. God. They, they shall be jubilant with joy, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar, 
Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top to the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. But this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down there, and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, declares the Lord, and I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, when you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel as we sing. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus answered, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, 
I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father. But the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess the Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing hymn 497, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord.
bestow to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is the feast day, the festival of Pentecost. And that name, that number, Pentecost, is a number which refers to 50. The Jews celebrated this feast day 50 days after the Passover, and it was the Feast of the Unleavened Bread as a harvest festival. The ingathering of the winter wheat, as well as the celebration of the giving of the Ten Commandments to Moses on the mountain, as it was accompanied by wind and fire, is what those ancient Jews were celebrating on Pentecost. Yes, it was 50 days after the Passover from death to life. In Jesus Christ, the true Passover lamb, as he died and as he rose again, and as he then comes to the harvest, that is the ingathering of his first fruits. And so on that first Christian Pentecost, 3,000 people were baptized and added to the number of the disciples in just the one day. And again, in that day, there was wind and fire, just like in the day of Moses. The wind is heard, the fire is seen. And the wind is the breath of the crucified, risen, and now reigning Lord Jesus Christ, blowing out His Spirit over His church, filling it with His breath, that is His Spirit, through His words that are being given to say and to be heard. Yes, in the proclamation spoken in many of the known language and dialects of the Mediterranean world, from the very mouth of the simple Galileans who had never taken a language course before, was heard by the people gathered for the celebration of that ingathering of the first harvest, the good news of Jesus, so that then they could be gathered by repentance and faith to the triune God. Yes, and there was fire. Tongues of fire, which were seen resting on each of those 120 gathered disciples. John the baptizer had said, I baptize you with water, but the one who is coming, who is greater than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So here at Pentecost was the completion of their baptism with the promised fire of the Holy Spirit. This sign of fire is, in this case, a sign of God's presence. It is a sign of His speaking. And as the Jews were celebrating on Pentecost, it goes back to Moses. But it goes back also to Moses and the burning bush on the mountain of the Lord, where there Christ, in His pre-incarnate presence, appeared to Moses in a bush that was on fire, but did not burn up. There God called Moses to speak for him in order to deliver his people from bondage. So also did he do the same at Pentecost. Tongues of fire rested on each one of the believers without burning a hair on their head, a visible sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit, and that God was about to be and was in fact speaking that God had been and was calling them to witness even as they then immediately spoke in tongues, that is, in languages, as the Spirit enabled them. So Peter explained this as he even confessed Jesus Christ, quoting from the prophet Joel. Remember, this is the same Peter who denied Jesus three times just 53, 54 days earlier out of fear. Now here, Peter speaks openly and boldly to thousands. What is it that changed Peter? Two things. He had seen the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now he had the gift of the Holy Spirit, and with him came understanding and confidence. These are the last days, Peter said, quoting Joel. When God will pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. The last days are Holy Spirit days. And so, from this point on, after Pentecost, 
begins the time of the Holy Spirit, the time of the church. And what began with the Father who sent His Son, born in the flesh at Christmas, continued through His Son, through Holy Week, as He paid for sin by His death on the cross, to show death's overthrow, then in His resurrection. And so now the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit carries on the work of salvation, the work of salvation from sin's bondage and slavery, now by the sending of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost to gather together the church. Yes, this is the same Holy Spirit who also raised up the dry bones of Israel in Ezekiel. Can these bones live is the question. And the answer, of course, is indeed, they can. With the word and the breath of God blowing upon them, they can. So the Spirit breathes life wherever and whenever He blows like the wind, but with power and life. Yes, just like the wind, you can't see the wind, but you can hear it sometimes, and you certainly can see its effects. Also, with the Holy Spirit, you can't see the Holy Spirit, but you can hear the Word, and where the Word is preached and heard, there the Spirit is at work, and you can see its effects in people's belief, and also in people's rejection of that Spirit. So it is with Pentecost. The wind, the tongues of fire, the miracles of languages were, in a way, the church's great grand opening. The balloon and fireworks that mark the public opening of Christ's end times embassy here on earth. That's what the church is. The church is in many ways a foreign embassy. It is a group of people destined for eternity living among those here in time. Yes, they live in the world, yet not of the world. As they proclaim the reign of Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the Holy Spirit is the divine ambassador sent from God to preach Christ crucified, risen, and reigning through the office of the Holy Ministry and through members of His church, the laity. So today, we are able to celebrate also, even today, in a way, a great and a grand reopening of the church as a gathering of the harvest. For it has been 11 weeks. Eleven weeks since we have had the one scheduled divine service where all the members of this congregation have been able to meet in person. Eleven weeks of uncertainty. Seventy-seven days, including even the highest and holy days of Holy Week and Easter, during which disease and the rumor of disease, threats of governments and worries as to safety, were hovering over our heads and pierced through our hearts. Yes, the CV-19, the coronavirus-19, has been and still is serious. But now, today, let us together think about how much more serious our sin is and the punishment that it deserves. But the punishment that it deserves is hellfire and eternal judgment. But let us also think about how much more serious the troubles of this life are because of our sin and the troubles that we bring upon ourselves and the troubles that have come upon the world. For we have seen this week in the news the result of this, pent-up emotions of angst, anger, rebellion, boredom, inequality, and how it can rise up in great fervor under the pressure of, of shelter in place, and then also the abuse of power by those in authority. No, to be so filled with fire and rage as to set fires and loot is truly a demonic response. And yet this trouble, along with the trouble of sickness, disease, unemployment, Depression, both emotional and financial, anger, rebellion, fear, hopelessness, oppression, inequality, injustice, are all a result of sin. 
sin which has corrupted men and women, soul and body, so that as we see in our society, the fruit of unbelief, which actually grabs hold of these things, these bad things, and propels them forward. Your friends, as we search our own hearts and minds, and as we repent of such fire, such anger, and such fear and hopelessness within our own hearts and minds, let us instead be purified by the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit as He has gathered us together today. He has gathered us so that the first fruits of faith, which is repentance, could be drawn from us. And so we have come here as dried up bones, parched by the relentless winds of change and trouble from the world and our own fallen nature, so that here, the Holy Spirit blows upon you and me the breeze which comforts and gladdens the heart. As you all confessed your individual and collective sin, you were moved by the Holy Spirit. And you did not hear in turn condemnation from God, but instead received the fire which purifies yet does not burn by the wind and the air, propelling the Word of God through me as your pastor. And so this wind and this fire is the Word which proclaims, you are forgiven. This is Jesus talking in this forgiveness proclamation. Jesus, the very Christ who has died on the cross for your sin, to take away the curse of burning hellfire, trouble, and damnation which you and I deserve. Instead of damnation and judgment, he has spoken to you again this day, peace and forgiveness for your sin, life, salvation, and hope by his Spirit. You are baptized sons and daughters of God. You are given peace, safety, clarity by faith, wisdom, and hope in Jesus and by His Word. You have been gathered by Him and to Him, away from the toxic troubles of this world, away from the anxieties that would wear out your emotions to despair or cause them to swell up and explode in an explosive rage. Friends, where Christians are gathered as the church to hear God's word and receive the sacraments, the air is not diseased, but the air is purified by the words spoken and sung, which remind you and me that you are chosen, you are forgiven, you are the Lord's. And so as you have been gathered, you are able to hear God's word speaking to you. And by God's word you are given faith by the working of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is the one who calls you to rest for this moment. But also has called you to rest and joy for eternal life. But he also has called you to be speakers and witnesses of God. As the Father and the Son have loved you and have made their home in your heart by the Holy Spirit, you are called to live this life in His joy and in His comfort. And so, as Christians, you have been given tongues to speak and to praise the Lord in a world gone mad in sorrow, anguish, and fear. Also that you can point them to the one who truly can give peace. So you do not be afraid. Be at peace. God is with you now, and He will be with you every step of the way here in life. You are in His hands, as I have said before. And now look about you as you are gathered here. You are not alone. And we who are gathered in this building, or even in our homes, are only a few compared to the great host of believers around the world right now 
and then also the countless throng who have completed their earthly travel, but join us around the heavenly throne even now. As Jesus said, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. And so, as we are gathered here, we rejoice. For we remember, as the Lord remembers you and me and all the host of believers in the sacrament of the altar. And so be refreshed each and every time you can by Christ's body and blood to receive it for your good. To be made ready. To be made ready to speak. Ready to live every day in His joy, looking forward to the glory that is yet to come. Remember, we are just living in this world. We are not of this world. And so what a joyous thing it is to be here together where the wind is heard and the fire is truly seen. The wind is the breath of the crucified, risen, and now reigning Lord Jesus blowing out over his church, filling it with his breath that is his spirit and his words as we heard. And the fire is faith. And its first fruits are repentance and our singing his praises by faith. He does this here in Ayuka and Flora, wherever his word is preached. Because as Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away, and I will come to you. And so he has come to you. He has come to you to fill you with his peace and his joy. And he will come again at the greatest of all Pentecosts, that great and powerful day when he shall come and gather all of us, his church and all believers, at the great harvest feast as he brings us to be with himself Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the fulfillment of His salvation and His love for all eternity. Courage. Courage to us all. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Let us now stand to sing the offertory. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy
and the strengthening of their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For those who have gone before us and now rest from their labors, who join us even now at the holy altar, let us give thanks to the Lord that we would follow them, even as they followed Christ, that we would be found faithful by those who come after us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, our glory, honor, and worship is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Lord, remember us and keep us in your kingdom as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the giver and perfecter of our faith. We thank and praise you for continuing among us the preaching of your gospel, for our, instru our instruction and our good. Send your blessing upon the word which has been spoken to us, and by your Holy Spirit increase our saving knowledge of you, that day by day we may be strengthened in the divine truth and remain steadfast in your grace. Give us strength to fight the good fight and by faith to overcome all the temptations of Satan, the flesh, and the world, so that we may finally receive the salvation of our souls. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord, thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 We now sing the final hymn in 500. 